November 1, 2025, Taxi Hi, and welcome to 121 Point Mike. This is Ground School. I'm Mike Thompson, and this video is the radio aspect of airport operations. This video will cover the radio communications on the ground. Of course, you can use the same information in the sky without a whole lot of difference. But there's a video on that later as well. There's no reason to be afraid of the radio. Remember that most controllers are people too. They're quite helpful. And you can always just use plain English if you must, but try not to. So let's go over some of the rules really quick. You must do whatever a controller tells you to do unless you tell them that you're unable or you declare an emergency. But if you do, you might have some splaining to do. Ultimately, you're in control of the flight, not the controller. So if the controller is sending you to your doom, it is your responsibility to avoid trouble. It doesn't matter if the controller was wrong if you're dead. You're also allowed to just ask the controller for what you want. Many times, you'll get it. Now, of course, I can't possibly cover all the different things that you might hear over the radio, but I'm going to cover all the basics that you'll need. To get more practice on radio, I highly recommend that you buy the COM1 VFR radio simulator. I was given it as a gift during my training, and I got to say that it totally removed any apprehension that I had about radio speak. So here's the syntax of radio communications. It sounds a lot like gibberish the first time that you hear it, but I, it follows a certain pattern and only includes the necessary info. So first, state who you're talking to, then who you are, then what you want or what you're going to do. That's it. You probably are already familiar with this and use it many times a day without being aware of it. Think about kind of how your typical phone conversation goes. Hey Jeff, it's Mike Thompson. I'd like to meet and discuss some of the products we talked about last week. How about next Wednesday morning, Jeff? You said the name of the person you're talking to, who you were, what you wanted, and then you might have repeated his name again at the end. Aircraft radio is really no different. Let's say that we want a taxi to a runway for takeoff and we're parked over here at the ramp. There are a couple of ways this could go depending on the type of airport. So let's start with the non-towered airports first. At the non-towered airports, you're going to follow the same speech pattern of who you're talking to, who you are, where you are, what you're going to do, but then you're going to follow it again with who you're talking to. You'll do this on the Common Traffic Advisory Frequency, or CTAF, which is shown the little airport information thing with the filled in C symbol. For instance, Williston Traffic, Cherokee 121 Mike, at the ramp, taxiing to runway 23, Williston. Let's go all MC Hammer on this so you can see what I mean and get used to it. Williston Traffic. I'm addressing the traffic at Williston Municipal. Cherokee 121 Mike. That's who I am. At the ramp. Where I am. Taxing to runway 23. What I'm going to do. And Williston. Who I'm talking to. But without saying traffic again. You add this at the end to avoid confusion. Because airports will share frequencies and it eliminates headaches and neck cramps for the guys that are not flying around your airport. Let's do another one, shall we? I'll do it for you, but then I want you to try one. Guthrie traffic, Cessna 121 Mike at Blue Skies, taxing to runway 34 Guthrie. It should start to make sense now after you've heard it twice. Let's pick another small airport that I've used in another videos to make my life a bit simpler. Here's your scenario. You're at the Garnett Municipal Parking Area, and you've just gotten fuel, and you're ready to taxi for runway 19 departure. What would you say? It should sound something like this. Garnett Traffic, Piper 121 Mike, at the ramp, taxiing to runway 19 Garnett. Now, here's a little gotcha. Many times, smaller airports will not have taxiways, so you must back taxi on the runway. Lots of runways will have turnarounds at the areas at the end uh, for just such a thing. But if you're planning on departing runway 1 at Garnett, this little tiny segment of taxiway here wouldn't help you. So you'd say something like this. Garnett traffic, Archer 121 Mike at the ramp, back taxiing runway 1, Garnett. Obviously, look and listen for traffic at non-towered airports before you enter a runway. It also helps if you don't back taxi down the center line so that uh, you're easier to spot from overhead. 
I once got a $100 hamburger in Veneta, Oklahoma. It's the airport that has absolutely no taxiway and just a runway, so you have to back taxi. But it's just a few hundred feet from the McDonald's that goes over I-44. And that sure was a neat way to get McDonald's. So I'm going to have you do this one on your own, and I'll give you the answer then. So you're here at the parking area, and you want to depart to the north. What would you say? Well, how about this? Vanita traffic, Cessna 121 Mike at the ramp, back taxiing runway 35, Vanita. Now, once you've completed your pre-takeoff checklist, you'll stay on the CTAF and announce your intentions. You use the same syntax, but you'll change the part about what you're going to do. Look for traffic and key the mic. Vanita traffic, Cessna 121 Mike, departing runway 35 to the east, Vanita. Okay, I hope this is all kind of starting to make sense. Uh, so let's move up the road because there's a towered airport at Joplin Regional and it's the same syntax up there, but there's a few differences because the airport is controlled. So Joplin's tower cannot see the T-hangers or the westernmost part of uh, the parking area. And so they've painted a black checkpoint on the ground here that you can uh, start to contact ground control where they can control you. You can see it here actually on Google Earth and it says to tune to 1216 and then call them when you get there. So this communication will go similarly, but you'll need to get the weather first from the ATIS. The ATIS at Joplin is 120.85, so you'll tune your nav radio to the ATIS during your startup procedures and before you begin to taxi to that checkpoint. The ATIS will say something like, Joplin Regional Airport Information Mic, 0121 Zulu, wind 320 at 6, visibility greater than 10 miles, sky condition broken 6,500, temperature 14, dew point 4, altimeter 29 4, visual runway 31 in use, VFR aircraft say direction of flight, read back all hold short instructions, advise on contact you have information mic. Now, of course, you want to pay attention to everything that's in that message, but there's a letter tag at the very end, and it's going to say, advise on initial contact, you have information, whatever. Whenever a new weather update is out, they will use the next sequential letter so that the controller knows that you're up to date on the most recent weather. They don't like reading the entire weather to you over the radio because it clogs up the radio. So let's say you've got information, Mike. Because uh, the winds were out at 320, we are going to expect runway 31 because that's what they said, but let's see here what they say anyway. The ATIS will usually, of course, you know, tell you which runway is in use. You key the mic and utter this. Joplin ground, arrow 121 mic at the checkpoint, ready to taxi with mic. So let's do a little bit more hammer time on this one. Joplin ground, who I'm talking to. Now, if I'm wrong, they'll correct me and I'll retune the radio, but I'm not wrong. Arrow 121 Mike, that's who I am, at the checkpoint, where I am, ready to taxi, what I want to do, with Mike, which means I've listened to the ATIS and I already know the weather right now. Notice that I didn't say the name of the airport again like I would with a non-towered airport. That's not necessary in this case. Now, I'm going to have you run one from, oh, let's say Kansas City downtown. Downtown or Wheeler and you're parked at the Signature Flight Support ramp, and you have Information India. You're in a Cessna, and your tail number is 121 Mike. Key the mic and speak. Long pause. Did you say something like this? Wheeler ground, Cessna 121 Mike at Signature Flight, ready to taxi with India. If you hit the high points, then you're okay. The idea is to convey the necessary information with the fewest possible words. It's not required that you speak fast. Speaking clearly is more important. Speed will come with practice. You can always tell the controller that you're a student pilot anywhere in the transmission and they'll likely slow it down for you. Perhaps, and you know, not get agitated when you keep asking them to say again. Get the COM1 VFR radio simulator for hours of practice, unless you're already feeling comfortable. Feeling all right? Okay. The ATIS will usually tell you who you're going to call first, if in doubt. Something like contact ground, or sometimes contact tower when ready to taxi. If you screw up and call the wrong person, they'll tell you who you're going to call. 
They're ready to believe you. You'll read back your taxi clearance and do whatever they said. Once you get to the runway, you'll have run through your pre-taxi checklist, you'll switch over to the tower frequency and tell them that you're ready to go, and it'll sound something like this. Tower, Warrior 121 Mike at runway 18, ready for takeoff, VFR departing to the northwest. Warrior 121 Mike, cleared for takeoff, left departure approved. That means that you can cross the hold short line and take off, and turn to the left to get where you want to go. If you're going to stay in the pattern for some practice, you'll likely say something like this. Tower, 121 Mike at 18, ready for takeoff, we'd like to stay in the pattern. See? Simple. But see how I use plain English there? That's just fine. You, they might come back with something like one, two, one, mic, line up and wait, which used to be position and hold. Uh, so you stop on the runway and you'll wait your turn uh, for the plane to get out of the way or whatever. But then they'll tell you that you're cleared for takeoff at some point. Of course, call them again if you've been sitting there waiting for a while. Most of you will probably learn to fly at non-towered airports where you'll make position reports to traffic. I say this simply because there are far more non-towered airports than there are towered ones. If you learn to fly at a towered airport, then you'll pick up this whole radio thing a lot faster because you're going to have to talk to tower and everybody. And so I think it's probably better if you can. Uh, most of my flying time is now done at non-towered airports, but it's close to class C, so I'm talking to approach. But I did learn at a towered airport. I think flying is just about the most fun thing that you can do. And I hope that you feel that this video will be helpful in your flying journey. So go ahead and click the subscribe button so that you can be notified when a new video is out. It doesn't cost you anything. And stay with me on 121 Point Mike.